Hello and welcome to Geek Addicts. My name is Matt. With me is my co-host, game collector extraordinaire, Bill Barber. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good, Matt. I feel like I'm dying, but I think that's from like staying up till like 12 o'clock the last like four days in a row. Yeah, I get that. It's been happening to me too. It's freaking um past couple of nights we just got like caught up and uh well a couple of nights ago we were watching a movie actually uh it was fried green tomatoes which i had never seen before and she's been on me to watch it for a while and it was actually a really really nice wholesome movie um and then last night we ended up just staying up way later than we intended to play video games <laughs> yeah i didn't play a lot of video games i was mostly reading a certain manga we'll be talking about today but mm-hmm. also uh I uh, just kind of trying to catch up on things. I've been doing a lot of podcasts this week, so I'm just kind of that's partially why I've been up so late every freaking night this week because I've been just doing a uh, late night podcasting. Yeah, which I signed up for, so it's kind of my fault, but <laughs> hey, it is what it is. It's also just been really busy at work lately. Yeah, well, it's cool to get those kind of connections and you know, be able to talk to lots of different people and get different opinions about things. And yeah. That's cool. It's it's a fun little community we have here here that's growing very quickly. I've noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny. I bought um, physical anime for like the first time in a while yesterday. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. You was uh, what was it? Spy Family and Sailor Moon. Yeah, I went to a uh, Target and they had them on sale. For, they were like fifty percent off both. It was Spy Spy Family Season One Part One, and the fourth season of Sailor Moon. <laughs> and I was like, fuck it. <laughs> like, oh. I think I paid like. Fifty dollars total. So. Okay, no I've been waiting for Spy Family to go down because I, I that's one of the ones I definitely intend to collect because I don't collect every show I watch, but the the ones I really like, I definitely will will go out of my way to look for deals and stuff. I know C- part two of season one of Spy Family is out. I just haven't seen it anywhere yet. It's probably just one of those things where like, um, you know, the, the stores just take a little bit to catch up. Yeah. Probably it was interesting online orders. It was interesting seeing it at Target of all places too, because Target's like downsizing their like physical media like really fast. Yeah, I noticed that the last time I went in there. It was really upsetting, honestly. <laughs> Ironically enough, the books are the one section that like is less downsized than the rest. Yeah, if anything, the books have overtaken like the DVDs and stuff. Well, I mean, you know, everywhere else is fucking downsized so much. Uh, I am. Best Buy is like just killing everything now, which is crazy to me. Yeah, I know. Like, I it's I don't even like want to go into Best Buy half the time anymore. Like, I mean, I I only go in like once a year at this point. I used to go in a lot more often, but it's, it's funny. The last time me and Alex went to Best Buy, we went in actually looking for like tech, and they didn't even have it. And it was like, what the hell? Jeez, I remember it was uh, like two or three years ago. Um, I think it was when right after we had gotten our record player, we were like, oh, let's go look for some records. Where would we get records? Let's go to Best Buy. Nothing. I don't even know if they had CDs. No, they completely killed their CDs. That's wild. Wild. Um, the only places you can get records these days are like a Newbury Comics, which is extremely niche, to, like in terms of areas where you can find those. Mm-hmm. And Target, for whatever reason, has a lot of vinyl. It's weird. Yeah, but it's like, half of it's taylor swift i know (laughs) so it's like yeah you can get them at target but do you want to it's like taylor swift and like a bunch of greatest hits albums and stuff yeah there's like some good stuff like you know you see some like some beatles or um uh what's it uh like van halen and shit but like then it's like mostly taylor swift (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. I swear to God, I swear to God, like half of the records I see every time I go in there is just Taylor Swift. She could put out an album of nothing but static, and her fans would probably like buy it anyways. Oh, they eat that shit up, eat it up. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're not here to talk about Taylor Swift because, frankly, I don't care. But also, <laughs> uh, this is Geek Addicts. We're talking about things that most Taylor Swift fans probably don't care about. That's true. Which is funny because I do know a few of them in the podcasting community. <laughs> I, hey, I, don't, I don't judge people who I don't judge people who like Taylor Swift, but I don't either. I just think it's funny. It's I'm more. I I don't have anything against Taylor Swift. I have. I, I'm more against her psychotic fans than anything. Yeah, 
Well, I, uh, I don't know. Well, one more thing on the subject and then I'll move on. But I will say there was this one thing that I saw recently that like really got me heated. It was, it was like, it was something, some meme or whatever that said that like she had used up like 20 million, um, was, it, was it 20 million gallons? Or, I don't know. Was it? I don't remember the exact number, but it was like, like hundreds of thousands of uh gallons of jet fuel going back and forth visiting her boyfriend over the past three months i'm like jesus Christ, oh yeah these fucking rich yeah. people <laughs> yeah they're they're all hypocrites but i'm gonna move away from that topic before we <laughs> annoy somebody too much yeah that's fair um yeah other than that though it's been a been a really it's a weekend before a vacation week so well not vacation week uh, vacation weekend i should say mm -hmm. um and they were always longer than they should be. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it wasn't that for me though, because I, I don't get Monday off. But <laughs> oh no, yeah, it's weird. There, a lot of places just don't do President's Day anymore. My, I don't know. My work is super weird about like the the ones it chooses to give us off. Like, I don't. I'm pretty sure we brought it up on previous episodes, but yeah, R Richards gave us way more days than than my yeah. current job does. I'm amazed Richards gave us that that many days because like they weren't union or anything like they really had no reason to. I, maybe that's part of the reason why it was just I, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like that place was a little bit more tightly knit than. Yeah, well, Richards was different. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but aside from that, we're actually we do have a topic. We're not going to go full GNC on this episode and just talk about nothing for an entire episode. It's not the worst um, thing in the world, but yeah, we'll true. continue. <laughs> um, so in the in the past, we did an episode covering the first arc of the Pokemon Adventures manga, mm -hmm. and we we've been we mentioned it previously, but we're going to actually do the second arc for this episode. And boy, was Gold Silver Crystal an interesting arc. Yeah, and it's really interesting the way that it just kind of picks up where the last one left off. Like it really like transitions really well into it. it it's it transitions pretty much kind of like the games do in a way, mm -hmm. although more concise just because there's an actual story going on for once. Yeah. Um, yeah, I will say the uh, characterizations in this arc were a lot different than I was expecting. Oh yeah, like the like if we're just looking at like the main three as opposed to the the first three that we got in in red blue green um it, it's wildly different it, it, one of the things that i love about it is how like gold is kind of like you know that he's like the delinquent with the heart of gold kind of well no pun intended kind of character um and then you got silver who like is kind of the same but more stoic but he also he's... has a reason for why he's doing the shitty things he's doing Silver is it the, the most interesting to me because he's the most spot on with his game counterpart, but also he's like still not really the same because like his game counterpart was just an asshole for no reason. Yeah, um, he just had a weird thing against Team Rocket. At yeah, the time. in this he's he's kind of he's not even really an asshole. He's just kind of a stoic like douche for a while, and then he gets a lot of character development later on. He's pretty much just a man in a mission the whole time. He just, you know, he doesn't, he's not going to go out of his way to, to like hurt, hurt people, but he also doesn't care what he has to do to accomplish his goal. I was, when I was reading it, I was like kind of put off because I'm like, why is gold coming off as more of a dick than silver is in this manga? Yeah, it's interesting though. And, and then I love how like you got these two, you got gold who's like, you know, the quote unquote good guy, even though he's kind of a dick. And then you got silver who's, the quote unquote bad guy, but he really like has good intentions. And then you got Crystal, who's just the straight up goody goody and is horrified by both of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because Crystal, I, I give the most like uh, leeway with because her game counterpart, Chris, A, only appeared in one game and was completely ridden out of the series after uh, the remakes with Heart Gold Soul Silver replaced her with Lyra. Um, yeah, which is just weird. But also, she had no character at all in a, a crystal version. Um, yeah, that's true. Which is interesting too, because Ethan uh, Gold's counterpart also has like no character at all. He's basically just another red. 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of how a lot of them go up until, like, more recent games. Yeah, it's interesting like that, because, like, that's why I think Gold is such an interesting uh, counterpart, because he is, like, wildly different than his game uh, game counterpart. Yeah, it's just, and I love that he just, like, already has a bunch of Pokemon, like, right from the start. Yeah, and he catches, like, a hundred of them <laughs> throughout the course of the manga. Yeah, right? But, like, he... He doesn't really bother with most of the ones he catches. Yeah, it, it it's kind of like how Red catches a bunch that he just never uses. Mm -hmm. Um, I also like that this is like the starter choices for the three, the main three in this one are signif are, are pretty much spot on with what the general consensus is with fans. Yeah, for sure. Because most, because pretty much everyone picks Typhlosion when they play Gold and Silver. Well, I, I personally always chose the fire starter, at least the first time I played a, a generation. Um, but I, I love Cidical, the Cidical line. And, you know, because of that, I always ended up fighting the Totodile line. So it just, I, I felt at home with the way that it was um, situated in this particular story. That in like if you pick Chikorita to start to start the game, you're just doing it wrong because you're just going for hard mode at that point. Well, yeah, because the first gym is is flying types and the second gym is bird types. Bug <laughs> or no, yeah. Bug types, yeah, yeah. You're you're gonna be in for a bad time. Yeah, um, it's like picking Charmander in the first game, which everyone did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as in Yellow where you get Pikachu. Well, yeah, that's true. Although I think in yellow you could catch uh, a manky. Yeah, that's that's the, the way on. to do it. So and in fire and leaf green, they gave uh, Armander the ability to learn metal claw early on, mm -hmm. which is definitely key. Although I still feel like because his special attack is higher than his physical attack, you're still better off just using fire moves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially Pretty since like rock types have shit special defense. Yeah, the, the um, Fire and Leaf Green definitely fixed a lot of problems with the original, but yeah. getting back to the uh, manga now, I think before we get into the plot, we should probably talk about arguably the biggest change for this arc, and that was uh, series artist uh, Mato steps down after the first volume, mm -hmm. which I don't... I was trying to look into it. Um, it looks like he had health issues, and she was forced to step down. Oh, really? Yeah, it, like, she didn't really step down because she wanted to. I think she was going through some health issues, and she just never came back. Because oh. she only did the first volume of the gold-silver crystal arc. And I will say it was a little disappointing to me at first, just because I really liked her art. Mm-hmm. Because she, I think, really captured, like, the feel of, like, the Pokemon art style and, like, look. Yeah, especially, like, comparing it to the games. Like, it definitely had that same type of uh, aesthetic to it. Yeah. Because uh, fall starting with Volume 10, the artist duties were picked up by uh, Satoshi Yamamoto, who has been the artist for the series ever since. Like, it's been him in a... Uh, Kusaka have been doing the series now for almost over like two decades, I think. Yeah. Which is wild to me that they've managed to keep it going that long. But uh, Yamamoto's art was interesting to me at first because it, it's very good. It's pretty much on the same level as Mato's. Mm -hmm. It just looked a little off that first uh, chapter that he did. I think it's part. I mean, I, I don't know personally i didn't look do any research to do it but i feel like it was um partially him trying to tran transition it in a smooth way like kind of trying to emulate mato's art style but still trying to kind of start to move away from it if that makes sense yeah because i've noticed uh yamamoto like his first arc has a lot of professor like the first few pages have a lot of professor oak in them Mm -hmm. And the way he draws Oak is a lot different than Mato. Like, Mato made him look very, like, kind of edgy and intimidating. Mm -hmm. And he looks a lot goofier in Yamamoto's design art style. Yeah, um, for sure. I will say, too, he also... The, one thing that we're probably going to reference a lot going forward is... Yamamoto really likes to draw the, the female characters. 
Yeah, uh, I feel like he might he, he might be a butt guy. I think a little because uh, you see crystals a lot, and it's a little disturbing. Yeah, and then there's that that one scene that you uh, you you posted a picture of on the Discord of uh, oh, the, gold gold padding uh, with with a green on the ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've had a um, I've had a bit of a running gag with um this manga is it's like every time I feel like it can't get any more ridiculous. I always, I find another scene that's like, what the like, okay. Need to share this one. No like the, fir the first major, like in the last one, it was the, the amputation scene. That was still like, that one just still fucking was like, what the fuck? Well, that one definitely catches you off guard. Like you're not expecting that from Pokemon at all. Yeah. And then it was a fucking bait and switch, but that's besides the point, which ironically, some of these ones are too. Cause then, in this arc or crystal's introduction scene there's like a scene where she's like in like a like a house dress and apron and she like once she goes on her journey she just like straight up strips them off and then she's wearing her trainer outfit underneath it but like the way they panel it it's like she's just like straight up stripping right in front of oak and oak's like young lady in this yeah. like disturbed <laughs> age and i'm just like i'm like i get it's a joke but they did this on purpose like Oh, super, with, super on purpose to mess with us. I'm like, what is with the maiden switches in this manga? Because it literally looks like she just like dropped her pants right in front of Oak. Like, yeah. the way that they like the way that it was drawn. But then you know you look and you see like, oh, she was just wearing stuff under it. But yeah, it was her skin tight uh, trainer outfit, which Yamamoto really likes to draw. Mm -hmm. Um, y you'll understand when you read the if you read the manga, it's it's very noticeable. But um, then there was another scene later on where, like, Gold supposedly goes to Pat Green on the shoulder, but pats her butt instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's like, oh, she moved. <laughs> he claims it was an accident, but no one believes him, and I don't really either. <laughs> well, Gold definitely likes girls. I mean, because he, he, like, right off the bat, he's got a thing for DJ Mary. Yeah, it's weird. Gold, gold likes girls, but girls don't like him very much. Red is oblivious to girls, and he's got an army of bitches following him around. Oh, yeah, for sure. Although he does, at one point, finally discover that Yellow's a girl, and he has yeah, kind of like the, an epiphany. He has an epiphany. At the end of this arc. <laughs> I mean, granted, they all do, except for Green, who's kind of like doing like the, uh, the that, that meme of like the monkey, like looking at side eye look away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think everybody kind of picked up on what was going on there, except for Red, until the very end. Well, Red is Red is Red. We'll get we'll get more into Red as we go on. Mm -hmm. So, this story is interesting because it kind of frames it very similar to how the games do, where we're, we're it's a new world kind of, and we're following new characters, but it's very much still the same like setting. Yeah. And we get introduced to Gold right away, and Gold's whole gimmick is he's kind of a, a dick, and but he's really good at catching Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Um, I also really enjoyed that they they gave young, youngster Joey his entire an entire arc. In this. Yeah, right. And he just kind of like pops in and out throughout. Like I I got a kick out of that the first time I read this, which to me is amazing because this this came out way before the youngster Joey meme was a thing. Yeah, which is just amazing. <laughs> and they reference his whole Radita thing, too, which is even funnier. Yeah. Yeah, long before, like, the internet really blew that up. I like in this one, too, how Gold is, like, just kind of starting his journey. And he's... Professor Oak is not impressed with him at all. But he constantly is like, hey, give me a Pokedex. And Oak's like, no, <laughs> go away, you annoying shit. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Also, like... Apparently in this universe, like the Pokemon professors don't give out Pokemon because everyone gets their Pokemon stolen. Yeah. Um, I think the only one that Elm actually like legitimately gave out was uh, Chikorita. And that was just because Chikorita was lonely. It was like, oh, all my friends are gone. <laughs> yeah. And Crystal didn't even want it at first. She was like, okay, fine. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Um, also, we got to we gotta bring up Gold's uh, gimmick. He plays pool. Yeah, he plays pool. Well, it it showed like later on when he goes to uh, was it Goldenrod that he just like loves gambling and he like gambles all of his money away. But um, 
So like he's super into pool, and that's kind of how he like throws his pokeballs out is with his pool cue. Like it, it's weird. He also has this backpack that's just loaded with pokeballs and like different Pokemon he's caught, mm-hmm. which is also a plot point at one point because his bag gets like mixed up with a uh, he uh, something Team Rocket was like stealing, and they steal all of his Pokemon. Yeah. And they, they ironically are just kind of like more annoyed because they lost the thing they were looking for. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. They like noticed that like, oh, these aren't the Pokemon we wanted. They literally just throw them next to a river. And yeah, I and think it was poly- his Poliwag gets lost in the river. Poor Poliwag. <laughs> I, he gets better later on, but well, yeah. apparently too, like those weren't even really Gold's Pokemon. Those were the family Pokemon. Yeah, they were more like like pets, members of the family. Yeah, the way that they do Pokemon in this universe is interesting to me because they're like, a, the po- a we mentioned before, the Pokeballs are, are see through and you can see them chilling in there. Mm-hmm. But also, um, you kind of like the Pokeballs can break, and but they Pokemon are still tied to the train. It's weird how they do it. Yeah, and then like you know, trainers can catch other trainers Pokemon if they're not careful. Like, it's really, it's definitely different than what you expect after playing the game. So I gotta ask. Did you find the plot in this one a little disjointed and hard to follow? Uh, to a degree, yes. Um, I mean, I, I like, like, when you look at the plot as a whole, like the whole story, I really like what they did with it. In a lot of ways, I like it more than the first one. Um, I, I think my... Going... Big... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think my biggest issue was, like, it feels like there's, like, five plot lines going on at once, and mm-hmm. they they kind of jump between them like sporadically at points. Cause like, there's a point where we start out following gold and you got to get a little bit of crystal and uh, not crystal uh, silver in there as well. Mm-hmm. Then it cuts to blue and red. Well, it cuts to red taking a gym leader, like has to become the new Viridian city gym leader, which he then immediately chooses instead that he doesn't want it. Cause he, he has like arm parallel paralysis at this point which is i guess a reference to like when his arms got frozen in the previous arc yeah and i guess um sabrina is suffering from the same thing so uh was it they both go to mount silver because there's like some special magic hot springs that supposedly heal injuries yeah that, that i did think was an interesting touch they did um uh, they they made the whole red going to mount silver thing but they actually gave it a plot reason mm-hmm. like he's was not it? just going on a mountain to be emo up there for eternity although i think it's pretty funny that uh he he went to that mountain because he has hand injuries and that that's causing a, pr- a problem to the point where he doesn't feel comfortable taking the gym leader position despite the, the fact same, that he apparently easily passed yeah and then he's also hand climbing this friggin' mountain to get to the hot springs well i think it's implied that he had the charizard and because he has um blues charizard and greens blastoise at this point as well yeah, which is also a fun like little reference to the games about why he had all three starters. Yeah, which I think it was an interesting touch. Did they ever explain, show them giving them to him? Because if they did, I completely missed it. I think it showed Blue giving him the Charizard. I think the, the Blastoise happened off screen and he just kind of says like, oh yeah, Green gave this to me when I bumped into her on the way to Mount Silver. Yeah, because Green does not appear in this until very much towards the end, aside <laughs> from some minor cameos in silver's visions because silver and green are connected as we learn throughout the story yeah because team rocket is kind of fucky in this in this uh, universe yeah they're really it's really bizarre the way team rocket and i like i like the way this story did it because it actually gives kind of more of a solid reason for why they were doing what they were doing in the gold silver arc Like, in the games, it's kind of just like, oh, yeah, we just want to keep being Team Rocket, so we're going to do Team Rocket things and look for Giovanni because we need Giovanni. And that's kind of the whole thing. Did you notice, too, that the character re-railed Lieutenant Surge, Sabrina, and uh, uh, who was the the Poison Gym leader? I forget his name right now. Uh, Koga. Did you notice that they kind of re-railed them back to their proper characterizations in this? Yeah, they definitely did kind of back it up a bit. I mean, they both... Well, I mean, Koga is kind of, like, off doing his own thing, as we find out later. Well, but... they 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 properly reference like, Janine getting the, the position. Yeah, which I did like. Um, but then, like, 
it definitely seems like Surge and Sabrina are just like, yeah, well, Team Rocket's kind of done. So I guess we'll just take the jobs that where it's just our cover up. Yeah, apparently, so I doubt, I don't know if this is true or not. This is just my theory. I feel like fans weren't, were kind of annoyed by that and that this is just them kind of fixing it and putting it the way it should be. I can see that. I mean, I, I guess for plot reasons, they also did need the gym leaders to be there. And it's not like they're just going to go and make up new gym leaders because that would probably piss fans off even more. Yeah, because I just thought it was weird the way they handled that in the first arc. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, Lieutenant Surge is so out of character in that first arc, it's, it's not even funny. Yeah, he's, I don't know. I mean, the, the whole concept of having, like, more than half of the gym leaders being involved in Team Rocket in some way, shape, or form was kind of convoluted in the first place. Although, if they were going to do it, they definitely chose the right ones. Yeah, I mean, Sabrina was pretty spot on in the first arc, aside from being a Team Rocket uh, member uh they completely fixed her though for gold silver crystal she's pretty much spot on mm-hmm. i like too when like they get when uh red runs into her up on mount silver she's like don't even bother coming over i had mr mine put a shield up so you couldn't <laughs> even if you wanted to yeah right because she's just totally naked in there <laughs> hot springs yeah don't worry Classic. there's convenient there's convenient steam always which is yeah. also flammable yeah, yeah. <laughs> when Char man, when Charizard, that scene was really cute. When Charizard sticks his tail in the fire and he has that look of shock on his face, like yeah, right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, hey, it's water. I can actually chill it. <laughs> and then it's like, nope. Oh well. Yeah, it was funny. Um, I'm trying to think too. Like, so there was that whole subplot with with uh, Red and uh, Blue, because Blue then takes on the gym leader role. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's also yellows kind of just doing stuff in the background throughout this. Yeah. And she ends up coming over to Johto like partway through the story. Yes. And then crystals introduction, I thought was interesting because like halfway through this, like gold and silver get like lost and like stranded on this Island, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the story like legit just stops there. And then it cuts to crystal and we get like, an entire volume of just crystals adventures and like you're kind of this whole time thinking like what happened to gold and silver <laughs> yeah well i think i think how it was was um in the first two volumes we're following gold and silver and they're they're doing their whole thing and you know uh they go through like the first few towns and stuff and then they end up at the lake of rage with um all the gyaradoses are freaking out uh, at this point they've fought the masked man a couple of times which we'll touch on him in a minute um but all the Gyaradoses are freaking out and stuff. Silver catches the red one. So that's like his Gyarados. And um, like something happens. They they fall into the lake. And then that's the last we see of them for a while. But yeah. they don't even really like call attention. Like it's not like in the first set of books where when Red was missing, they made such a huge deal about it. It's like they don't even really like mention that they're missing for a while. No, because we spend an entire, like, character arc, basically, with Crystal just going on her own journey. Yeah, playing kickball. I- I'm not going to lie. Crystal is probably the most developed character out of all of them here. Easily. Uh, at least out of this particular set. Yeah. Because Silver, he get- his character development is very, like, like rear-weighted. Like, uh, it- most of it takes place towards the end of the manga. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the end of the arc, I should say. Gold's character development is basically non-existent because he is almost identical how he starts to how he ends. Yeah, well, he has a little bit of a breakdown towards the end. Of, uh, I think it's like an inadequacy thing towards the end. Yeah, especially when Red shows up and Red's just better in every way. Yeah, which I, I really like the way that this arc ends too with, with Red and Gold, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, yeah. uh, there was also a, another scene with uh, Gold and Silver before they uh, disappear where they're going through the burned tower and uh, they have to save uh, uh, Jasmine at one point. Right, the the steel gym leader. Yes. The the lighthouse one. The one with the uh, the Ampharos. Yes. The oh, steel wow. gym leader who has more electric types than steel types. I don't yeah, right? Find him user. Well, to be fair, there was like two steel types in Gen 2. So. Do, we, do we want to touch on any of the new gym leaders? Are there any in particular that are really worth talking about 
Uh, Jasmine was interesting. Morty's interesting. What they did with Morty. Yeah, Morty. <laughs> no, not, no, not that Morty. I couldn't um, help. I couldn't help. Like every time he got brought up, someone was talking to him. It was like, eh, Morty, I need you to. I need you to find something for me, Morty. <laughs> yeah, Morty has like powers in this in this uh, universe. Yeah, well, he, he's supposed to be like kind of the opposite end of the spectrum to Sabrina. Yeah, in in a sense, and I, I kind of like that. They they because his character is always kind of just like unremarkable in the games, and this one they kind of gave him a interesting backstory. Yeah. Um, I like Chuck because they gave Chuck backstory where he was training Blue. Yeah, we find out that like you know in the first arc when we would hear like oh Blue went away to a foreign country to train in Pokemon and stuff and he just came back and blah blah blah. Then we find out that Chuck was the person he was training with originally. Yep, and then uh, the only other one I can think of off the top of my head because like Faulkner is very just kind of meh. He's there. He's a cop. Oh yeah, they gave him something. I guess he's a little more interesting in this in this one. I did like the uh, whole thing with the, um how he uh well the thing where he bumped into the poacher and he's just like, Oh yeah, only poachers are out here, freaking blah blah blah. And by the end of it, they're just like, Yeah, by the way, I'm a cop and you're under arrest. Yeah. <laughs> um Bug- Bugsy is incredibly unremarkable, except for one scene later on that we'll get to where he gets uh absolutely trounced. I'll save that for later. There's also the scene where gold hits on him thinking he's a girl. Uh, yeah, they did go there. <laughs> that that seems a little weird in uh in, in modern day standards now. Yeah, because I wouldn't even say he looks like a girl. He looks like a child. <laughs> he looks like he's like eight years old. Yeah, I know that like his androgynous like looks have been like a, a meme in the series. I when they went there, I was like, wow, they were going there back then. Mm-hmm. Um, Whitney was still Whitney, still just as annoying. Yeah. Um, and her milk tank has an entire story in this, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, like they're all fairly. Claire. Well, I was going to save Claire for last because Claire is Claire is Yamamoto's other favorite to draw. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's an entire <laughs> opening spread of that's just her ass, and I was like, I was like, Jesus, dude. She also likes the skin tight suits. Yeah, I mean, she's <laughs> at least an adult. I'm like. True. Crystal, <laughs> um, I feel like oh. Claire. He went like over the top, and I was like, "Oh no!" And what was um, what the hell was? I, I feel like it was it Faulkner's dad who was like buds with Chuck, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I used to be the Violet City gym leader," and like we see him in like one scene, and he's a total badass, and we never see him again. I that's a reference to the games because in the games, Faulkner does mention that like he inherited his Pokemon from his dad. Mm-hmm. Who I assume was the previous gym leader. Yeah. Um, I guess they gave they tried to flesh that out a little bit. They didn't do a lot with it. I would have liked to see more of him. Yeah. Um yeah, going through the the story bits though, like my, my other issue with this arc is like not a lot happens. Like in in short bursts, I should say. Like the grand scheme of things, stuff happens, but it feels like it you really have to like read the entire thing to figure it out. Yeah. It definitely seems like, whereas in the first set of books, it was um, at the beginning, at least a lot more episodic. Yeah. You know, everybody would have like his like chapter or two isolated adventures. And then it'd be on to the next thing. Um, Whereas uh, the gold, silver crystal stuff, it definitely seems like they had an idea of what they wanted to do with this story arc. And they were building towards it for the whole time. Yeah, like, because to me, like, uh, red, blue, and green were all very likable and easy to, like, become fans of. Because they all were pretty much equally focused on throughout the entire manga. Mm. This one, it's like, gold and silver are there at first for, like, a volume. And then they just disappear for, like, a volume and a half. Mm -hmm. So you, like, kind of lose interest in them. And then... Crystal, you kind of end up being she ends up kind of being like the focus for a while, and that's why I feel like she's the one that like you kind of latch on to. She's also the most normal out of all of them. Easily. Well, that's why I was saying, like, I love how she when she finally meets gold and silver, she's just horrified by like how shitty they both are at times. <laughs> like Crystal also goes through her like um heroic like uh breakdown in the middle where she like loses all confidence in herself and has to go through like this training regimen to get back her confidence. 
Yeah, and I loved her her whole like backstory about how her first day of like training to be a Pokemon trainer, she broke both of her arms. So then th- that's why she kicks the Pokeballs is because she had to learn without her hands. Like that was pretty yeah, cool. that was cool. I I like that they kind of like Crystal definitely has the most emotion in this uh, this ch- arc. Just like she goes through the full like gambit of like emotions. Like there's one there's points where she's completely just destroyed. There's other points where she's like angry. Like she's she goes through like it all. It definitely seems like like gold is definitely meant to be the main character in a lot of ways, but in a lot like through most of it, I definitely feel like Crystal is more the main character. Crystal does the most. That's like the reason why I feel like she's the main character in this arc. And she completes the Pokedex. She does. She's like the only one out of all of them that actually does what Professor Oak wanted. Because mm-hmm. it's Wait. like red, blue, and green technically are Dex holders, and they are doing the, and in yellow. I forgot she has one too. Oh, um, had one. Oh yeah, that's right. Because she technically had reds. True. I thought I thought she was given another one later. I don't believe so. Maybe I'm misremembering that. Um. Yeah, but it's like the those three have Pokédexes, but they really like they kind of like just half assed to do the uh the actual like Poké Pokédex stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh Crystal's the only one that legit is going all over the place like catching these things cuz like she actually like cares. I think that's the whole reason why Professor Oak gave her the Pokédex to begin with. Yeah. I also really like the development of her and her uh, Chikorita throughout the uh, series where she yeah, like probably doesn't like it at first and then slowly starts liking it more and more to the point where it actually evolves because like she needs it to. And I love that Chikorita and like throughout all of its forms is like, even in the manga, the derpy one of the three. Yeah. He's like, Hey guys, I'm here too. I finally found you. <laughs> yeah. Good old, good old Chikorita. It's too funny. Um, I'm trying to think other are other major things. It's very hard to like explain this one because it is so disjointed. We should probably talk about the masked man. Yeah, he he kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah, he, he shows up, I believe, in the Ilex forest at first, which makes sense when you look at the whole thing all together. Um, so he just kind of shows up, and uh, it wasn't he like mind controlling the dude with the far fetched. I think that was the implication. And like that's kind of like his thing is he like mind controls people like in a lot of the ways like uh back back in Lavender Tower when Blue is mind controlled. Yes. Um, so that's kind of like it was kind of like his like initial thing, and obviously we got a big reaction from Silver from that, and you know we find out that uh, he was the one who kidnapped uh, Green and Silver when they were when they were young. Yeah, with the uh, the Hoo. Mm-hmm. Which and apparently why... he just had. Ho Ho and Lu or was it just Ho Ho or was it Ho Ho and Lugia? Well he had the rainbow and uh silver feathers. Mm-hmm. And that's how he uh captured them. And he like is like part of this like cult of like Team Rocket ish members who they all have like these masks and they're all just like paired up in these pairs of like male and female. Mm-hmm. Well, I think those are like his like main executives. Like th- those are the children that he raised from young ages. And they just kind of came in and took over Team Rocket, which makes a lot more sense as to like Team Rocket's motivation throughout this this story. Yeah, because um, it's implied like that um, that it, it explains that's how Green and uh, Silver knew each other because they were paired together mm-hmm. and they ended up escaping. Like, there's a whole scene where it's like they finally break the masks off and they're like, "Oh, so that's what you look like." Mm-hmm. I think it's also implied that Silver's not, Silver and Green are their actual names. I'm not sure. At least silver, because like Green makes that comment about, I'll call you silver because you have pretty silver eyes. That makes sense. Yeah, because there's, um, I, I won't say anything, but later on, there's some stuff that happens that it would make sense if that's not his real name. Yeah, I mean, because it's not really a spoiler because like he's Giovanni's son. That's been a thing in the games forever. Yeah, well, I mean, um, that's, uh, that's kind of like the, the one of the driving forces of the heart gold soul silver manga is that whole plot point yeah yeah that because that's like one of those it, it's like one of those plot points that like everybody knows but it's never been fully explained 
I think it only actually happened in the games as like a DLC for Heart Gold and Soul Silver, or like it was. Like yeah, a it was. It was a mystery DLC. gift. Yeah. Back when mystery gifts were a pain in the ass to get because you had to go to freaking Game Stops. I never got any of those because I I never knew when they were happening or wh- how that worked or anything. By the time I I knew how it worked, they were already beyond that. <laughs> so I I never got any of them legally. Action replay is your friend. That's all I'll say. Well, I can um, you know come to think of it, I could. I wonder if I could. Uh activate that stuff because that little ds chip that i have has all the ds pokemon games on it and yeah. it has cheats built in for every game on there so they might be programmed in there that's how i got like all the all the mystery gifts on those because they're impossible to get now so i don't feel bad for cheating yeah well you know that's nintendo for you yeah that was a cool idea that unfortunately like locked so many pokemon out mm. even though they're like on the cartridges and easily obtainable yeah the code is there you just can't get it <laughs> yeah uh oh well um yeah going back to the plot though now um uh, we talked about the uh the masked man all those things i think the final climax like the last like 12 to 14 chapters of this manga are are literally all titled the final battle yeah, it's the, the entire last volume, I believe, is which is, I believe, if I'm remembering right, bigger than usual. Uh, but they're it, like the whole thing was basically just one giant chapter just split up into sections. Yeah, the, the final, the way that they laid out the collector's edition manga like editions is interesting because that final volume is like the middle section of uh, the book. So, like, the last, like, uh, the last volume in the book is is the start of the Ruby and Sapphire arc, so it's like you have to read like ha- like over half, and then it's like, nope, stop here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine that being confusing when you have to stop at certain points. Well, it's funny too because like the start of the Ruby and Sapphire arc uh, is the um, the volume that has gold on the cover. Is it really? Oh, well, that, oh, that's right. Editions. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, the gold and silver arc starts in vo- the third uh, collector's edition that has yellow on the cover. Mm-hmm. So it, it it's weird because then like uh, crystals on the cover of like uh, set one of them, and then silver doesn't get a cover in any of them. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Yeah, it's just the weird way they laid them out. Uh, that final gym battle though was so it's like a tournament of between all the gym leaders. Yeah, because I think it was like a way. Um... If I remember right, it was a way to try and like reinvigorate uh, interest in p- people participating in gym battles. Um, I I feel like this was just like a, uh, I feel like this was just the author like trying to f- basically correct everything from the previous like arc. Yeah, because in this arc, it definitely seems like gym badges are just the way the gym badges are supposed to be because they like in the universe of the manga they changed the rules so that oh if you get all the gym badges in a region then you're automatically in the tournament you yeah that was a through. great that was a great character moment where silver's like the lady's like no wait you have to go through the preliminaries and silver's like yeah i have all these that means i can just pass through right and she's like oh right away sir go ahead yeah and as he's walking by he's thinking like yeah i stole them but whatever <laughs> yep yeah, because they too funny. they actually make the gym badges matter now, which is well matter in the sense of what you actually think. Yeah, do do they do what they're supposed to do in terms of like how they were in the games? Yeah, not the whole their magic in there in yeah. the first arc. Use them to summon Lugia. <laughs> um. Yeah. So there's like this massive tournament, and I'm not gonna lie, this arc was very hard to follow. Like this entire final storyline. Hmm. The whole thing like, with like the Magna Train and Team Rocket and stuff. Just the the final the the entire final battle story, mm-hmm. like that was because it just kept going all over the place. Like it was like all of a sudden R- R- Red's here again because they that's where the whole like Red going to Mount Silver thing is. It's like just kind of stuck in there. Yeah, and then it cut flashes back. There is some good character moments though. Like this is where you get to see like Lieutenant Surge and Serena or Sabrina like um get their characterizations fixed like there's a point where surge is like i forget who does surge go up against uh let me think 
I have it in my notes. Hold on. Yeah, because there's a whole thing where like Serge is um he's like talking up. He's like, this is going to be a piece of cake. I sh I'll have no problems facing this my opponent. And I forget who he goes up against. Uh, one moment. Uh, was it Faulkner? No, I, I don't think it was Faulkner. No, that would have been too easy. Uh, no, Faulkner fought Janine. Oh, right, yep. Uh, where is it? He fought Morty. More, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And Morty, Morty kicked his ass. And he had this look. He had like the biggest, like, embarrassed face after when Serena's, uh, Sabrina's talking to him. Oh. And then he's all like, he's like, don't over underestimate them. They're strong. And then Sabrina, Sabrina's up against Bugsy. Yeah. He just wipes the floor with him. For real. And it, it literally cuts to like them starting the battle. And then it like jump cuts to the end. And Bugsy's just on the floor with Sabrina walking away, like with this like smug look on her face. And it's like, yep, that was expected. Yeah, well, well Morty did the bane of every Nuzlocker and used Destiny Bond. Yep. So it was a, it was a draw in that particular case. And I, I liked um, I liked when uh, what was it? Uh, Brock went up against. Um, oh, oh yeah, he went up against Jasmine, and yeah, uh, Jasmine disguised her Steelix as an Onyx, and it looks so jacked up. It's not even funny. For real, it just absolutely wrecked them. See, I didn't notice that at first, and then there was like a, a big like close up of uh her Steelix's face with the Onyx uh disguise on, and I was looking at him like I'm like Steelix, you're looking rough, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then like then all of a sudden the armor because I'm also like, why does Brock think it's an onyx? And then it, it hit me, I'm like, oh, it's disguised. Mm -hmm. Oh, we didn't talk about the dogs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um they kind of happen in the background. Yeah. Well, I mean, Sui Kun had like a, a much bigger role throughout. Cause True. Was, well, they kind of lifted his storyline from like the crystal the, game, the crystal game and like the anime movie and stuff mm -hmm. where uh, I think it's like, what's, what's the guy's name? The one that's like obsessed with the uh, Sui Kun. Uh, you seen, you seen like they had his whole like character thing. And th there's kind of like a running gag of like who's going to be the one to finally catch Suicune, and that ends up being Misty of all people. Yeah, well, it's like they were going around, they were looking for uh, like trainers who were worthy to partner with to um, to try and free Ho -Oh from the Masked Man. Yeah. Um, so you know, go figure. The the water one chose Misty, the electric one chose Surge, and the fire one chose Blaine. <laughs> yeah. I just think it's really funny that um, it, it it just chooses Misty out of nowhere. And it's like, oh, yeah, Misty's here. And it's just like, oh, you're, you're cool and you like water Pokemon. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. It's also like that Misty has her uh, redesign now from uh, uh, her, uh, Gold Silver and Heart Gold Soul Silver now with the, uh, the shorter hair. Yeah, I think Brock did too. Brock is so funny in this manga because he is like nothing like you remember from the anime. <laughs> Mm -hmm. he's just like it, a dude like he's not it, like girl crazy or anything anime brock is like the, the is ironically the most famous version of that character but he's also the only one that's nothing like that because mm -hmm. his his characterization in both in the games the manga and pokemon uh, origins is like he's literally just like the first gym leader that's like literally his personality yeah he's just like hey here's an important lesson now beat it kid <laughs> yeah, especially like because he was voiced by Johnny Young Bosch in Origins, and it was such a weird voice to hear coming out of him. There's a lot of interesting voices coming out of people in that in that like I don't know if you call Show. it a movie or a mini series, but uh, mini OVA maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, wasn't Kyle Kyle Hebert Professor Oak? Yes, and that was uh, jarring. Right, Bryce Pappenbrook was red. See, that one fit to me. I, I definitely, like, when I was reading the manga, I was reading Bryce Pappenbrook as, as Red. Well, that was, like, right before he really, cause that was before, that was right before Aaron. I think he took over Aaron, or he became Aaron. Because yeah. I think Attack, Attack on Titan came out right around that point, too. I think he was already doing Sword Art Online by that point. 
Yeah, well, he was kind of typecast for years as being like the stereotypical young protagonist voice. Mm-hmm. And then he voiced Aaron, and that just kind of changed everything. Well, he still kind of was when he started as Aaron. Well, Nobody, nobody knew where that series was going to go at the start. Yeah, I still don't. Um, <laughs> I'll get to that eventually. <laughs> um, Finished Kenshin already. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got to do the filler now. <laughs> but yeah. But, um, I was trying to think. Oh, yeah. And then uh, all the gym leaders got, got completely wrecked. And then the dogs had to go and uh, re-choose, and they ended up with, you know, our, our main three of his arc. Yeah, which I which was interesting, because the, also the main three of the previous arc have the birds, conveniently. Yeah, which was kind of cool. I, was... I, I like the reveal of it, too, because, like, there's a whole thing in the, in the previous arc about how Green was afraid of birds because of the whole the trauma oh, of being kidnapped by Ho-Ho and stuff. And then she overcame that fear by capturing the three legendary birds and using them against Ho and Lugia. Well, that 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 scene when like she gets re reconfront, basically gets uh, forced to reconfront Ho. That scene is, is like hard to read at first because like they really just like fucking they're fucking with her head there. Yeah, like super bad. Especially because like Green at this point too, we mostly know her as the kind of. Um, her character was hard to pin down because she was very um, deceptive at times. Mm -hmm. And this one is where we finally really, honestly, green, I feel like has more development than gold and silver at times in this manga. Yeah. Because green goes through an entire character arc uh, development. Like she's not in this at all. Like the first, like, like first, like three thirds Three fourths of it, yeah. Th- then she appears very briefly. Well, she gets like referenced by Silver every now and then because Silver remembers her. Mm. And then this guy randomly stops Silver in during the uh, the tournament, and he's like, "Hey, you shouldn't uh, do this. You should leave now." And he's like, "Who the hell are you?" And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the guy's face melts off, which I, I was like, "What the hell?" And then it's like cuts to it's Green's ditto, and I'm like. God damn it, she's gotta stop doing this shit. Yeah, I love I love how like the the dude in gold and silver who's like, oh, I'll teleport you back home if you want, like at the Pokemon League, like the the, the guy who's in the games and offers to do that for you is actually green in the manga. Like I love See, that. I love this the little is why, things like that. This is why green slash leaf doesn't appear in the any of the games because that she's right there. Yeah, she's just disguised with Ditto all the time. Yes, it makes perfect sense. She could be anyone, and you can't play, and you she can't play. You can't play as her in gold or silver because she didn't exist technically in the mm-hmm. game. So it makes perfect sense. That's right. Big brain. Don't right question here. it. Don't question it. <laughs> yeah, but that scene was great because she basically just forces him away, and then yeah. she then it, we cut. It, basically, she takes over, and I like how the thing that knocks her out of her like. Um, her kind of like despair moment uh, during the reconfrontation with Ho is uh, she sees Silver all like beat up, and that's kind of what snaps her out of it. Mm-hmm. And she has like probably the biggest character like breakthrough there because then she's fully like she basically reaches her full potential there. Yeah, well, I think I think Green also had the benefit of having that whole seven volumes previous like of development and characterization before. She really got to this point. We obviously didn't get that with Gold and Silver, so yeah. I mean, I'm 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 looking forward to reading future stuff because I'm hoping they'll get better development later. But mm-hmm. um, I I liked when they the main three of them, uh, Red, Blue, and Green, reunited because they that was a great like nostalgic moment, honestly, for a manga that I only read like a couple months ago. Um, yeah, <laughs> but um, it is cool there's, though. There's a great scene where it's like Blue and a uh, Green are like they reunite and they're just kind of like uh starting to fight and they're like they're they're kind of getting overwhelmed and then like red shows up out of nowhere and they're just like red you're back mm. and he of course now is back to his full potential again now that his arms are healed oh, yeah and, he stopped he stopped the train yes now it's his triumphant return and uh it's there's a great scene where like all three of them are like let's go finish this fight and uh he's like wait i need to give you guys these back and she, he gives uh blue his charizard back and green her uh blastoise back mm-hmm. and he's like 
we can use them to finish it, finish off the fight. And then there's this great scene of them all running to the next battle, which is which was a nice callback. Yeah, for sure. And then we got both uh, the three, both uh, both sets of protagonists basically team up there, which is fun. Yeah, it was really cool. We should we should probably mention who the mass man is by this point. Yeah. So, so how, uh, how long how long did it take you to to come to the conclusion that it was him? Once it was revealed. Oh really? Yeah, I didn't pick up on it. It would not when he not even when they said like oh he's known as the mask of ice. See, I was very tired <laughs> this week and I probably just didn't notice. <laughs> That's fair. Well, it's Price. Price is the masked man. He's he's a piece of shit. <laughs> that was such a weird reveal. I was like, oh, it's this guy. Yeah. I was just like, okay. But then it all like, makes sense because like it's revealed earlier on when he's first introduced that he can create like living ice sculptures. Like it pre- basically like, you know, he can like freeze and melt and refreeze the sculptures in such a way that they move. And that's like kind of how he's been doing a lot of shit behind the scenes. Yeah, it was just like such a weird. Um, it was just such a weird thing to pop out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Especially because Pri- Price is like probably the most unremarkable gym leader too. Probably, um, yeah. I mean, but at the same time, I can't really think of any other gym leader that that would fit like the role of villain, really, except for maybe Claire. But she's more just fixated on her brother. Her cousin, or whatever the fuck. Lance, yeah. Um, you who, know what who, it turns out that Silver was working for, by the way. Yeah, that, that also. I get their building shit, but like at points I was like, God damn it, guys, like calm down on the subplots for a minute. Yeah, right. It's a Pokemon manga. <laughs> um, yeah, when it, when it was revealed as price, though, like legit, my, res- my reaction was, oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, <laughs> the guy, the, the guy in the wheelchair, at least the one you'd least expect. It's like the gym leader that I rounced in my playthrough and forgot about immediately after. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was an interesting reveal. I mean, they did something with him. I guess that's something. Yeah, and then we find out that his his goal was to capture Selby. Yes, that was his, Which, his whole purpose in all this. They they made reference to the GS ball. Yeah, the GS ball actually has like we we know now what what the GS ball was for. That, that's one of my favorite useless items in Pokemon lore is the GS ball. Yeah, like it had an entire storyline that they were building up in the anime, and then they completely just like they made the movie that was apparently supposed to tie into it, and then they just never used it in the movie, and it was like, mm-hmm. and then it just goes away after that. Well, you know what is because they didn't get feathers from Ho Oh and Lugia first to weave a net, <laughs> because apparently Pokeballs use invisible nets to capture Pokemon. The manga is so fucking weird. <laughs> they I come up with some that. wild shit, man. It, it just makes it so much fun. Kasaka just kind of makes shit up, and that's kind of what what's funny about it. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have to like be part of official Pokemon lore, but it just they, they do so many crazy creative things throughout this whole manga series, and it's just so much fun. It's weird too because a lot of the things are outlandish as fuck, but like there's also so many moments that are like he clearly played the games and understands like the, mm. the lore and like actually makes uh, like correct decisions on things. Yeah, because. Um, going into that actually now like there's a few like moments that i thought were really fun like one of my favorites is uh one of so it, we saw earlier that gold has a polywag which evolves into a polywhirl and then almost immediately he has a king's rock that he gets his hands on and the polywhirl just has the king's rock for whatever reason and silver is like yo trade that with me real quick and they do the trade and then Poly, his Poliwhirl evolves into Poly uh, Toad, and they have they go in and explain the whole. Some Pokemon have alternate evolutions. Yeah, I, I think that whole like from Poliwag to Poly Toad happened within like one page. Yes, it did. <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> I was, oh yeah, the evolutions in this uh, arc are hilarious to me because they just happen so freaking quick for no reason. Yeah, they don't keep track of levels or anything like that. It just doesn't matter doesn't matter well he had a whole thing where like because there's a point where um 
the all three the, the main three gold silver and crystals starters all evolved to their final form legit in like the last um all in one page and they like yeah. make this whole thing it's like oh well they they were close when they were young and they were training together so they all evolved at the same time and it's like what what fantasy did you pull this one out of but okay yeah it's the power of friendship bill come on get with it exactly <laughs> um Oh, and we didn't mention um, Togepi either. The whole thing with how Gold got the egg and uh, he hatched Togepi and it just was instantly a delinquent. Yeah, because it was Gold's. And then um, that kind of leads into later because Yellow, for some reason, was taking care of Red's Pikachu, but also had her own Pikachu. And then they got busy in the daycare and had an egg. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, Jesus. I'm like, we got straight up Pikachu fucking here, and this is what the hell. Like, so then Gull goes and hatches that, and apparently it was a brand new species, and he's the one who coined the term Pichu. Yes, because I love how they just play like willy nilly with the with the continuity in this. It's great. So much fun. I love. I can't get over the two Pikachus. It was like, what the? <laughs> when I got through that page, I was like, I'm like, we really go in there? Okay. It like shows them with the eggs and they're like both blushing. Like the dude's like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> For kids. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know what happened. I turned my back for one minute and there was suddenly an egg. Which this, man <laughs> this manga is usually placed in the kids section, I'm going to point out. so. Yeah, well. There's some edgy shit in this manga, and I'm always like, every time I read through it, I'm always like, for kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, even even the the English rating is is for kids. Yeah, which is hilarious. I get it's it's because Japanese standards are so different. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not bad. Like you know, no. I, there's honestly the most the most like honestly the crystal like. Uh, Changing a joke was probably more bladed than that one. Yeah, and that was like the the thing in the previous arc where Green was like, "Hey, hide it until you can flaunt it," kind of thing. Yeah, that one was good. Which they did call back to when uh, Yellow revealed her uh, identity finally. Because mm -hmm. I just love Green's like looking away in the background. Yeah. So we have we have um, so Gold was like chasing down Price, trying to stop him from catching Celebi because he had the GS ball and everyone else was following behind. And yes. um Gold gets his ass kicked like multiple times. Um and then like he kind of has like a little bit of a mental breakdown because he gets this note from Professor Oak that's just like hey everyone who has a Pokedex is special except for you <laughs> until he flips the paper over. Um but what was that it was like a red was the battler uh, blue is the trainer, green is the evolver, yellow is the healer, silver is the trader, and crystal is the catcher. And then, you know, we had the, the big, um, like the big moment where we, it's revealed that uh, gold is the, the hatcher. He He's good at hatching eggs and can bring out the most potential of Pokemon when he hatches them. Which I find funny because they, they say green's the evolver, but I'm like, I don't know. They seem to evolve Pokemon like fucking willy nilly in this arc. Yeah, I, I don't really remember green really particularly being good at evolving. Because I think her Pokemon just kind of evolved by chance because they were like Moonstone Pokemon. Moonstone, I mean, Blasty evolved pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it was already War Turtle by the time we met her. So, I mean, that, there's that. Um, yeah, I she mean, had that well, snubble from the ver she had that snubble apparently from the first arc, and that never evolved. So I don't know what was happening there. We'll take your word for it, Katsuga. <laughs> um, <laughs> they had to give her something. Yeah. Uh, so what do you think of Gold's heroic sacrifice at the end of the manga? Yeah, I love that he just kind of like, oh yeah, no, I'm fine. Like, <laughs> well, here's the thing: when he did that, they're all like, oh no, is he is he gone? And I'm like, he'll be back the next page. And I turn the page, I'm like. Yep. I'm like, yeah, there he is. Chilling. It's just like, we'll never forget your sacrifice, Gold. He's, and then he's like, talking about him right here. He's like, I'm right here. And I'm going to go take, <laughs> I'm going to go with Red and fuck off. Bye. And then they just yeah. leave. I don't even remember. Like, how did he get out? Do you remember how? He just kind of gets out. It's, he doesn't, it's not really well explained. 
Well, let me see if I took a note on that real quick. Because I, I feel like that's something that should have been explained. Right. Also, I love it. I love how Crystal, like during the tournament, her literal job that she was given was babysit gold. <laughs> yeah, right. Because gold is just he just fucks off so much. I love I love gold and Crystal's relationship throughout this because like she gets so fed up with him so often in this. Nope, I made no note of it, so I guess they just didn't explain it. They just got out. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, so we never touched on uh, Price's like actual motivation for why he wanted Celebi. So apparently he went through all of this crap because his Lapras died when he was a kid. So yeah, he... when I got there, I was like, I was like, really like that. Yeah, well, it's not the first time. I mean, that was the plot of X and Y. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe they just stole that from the manga. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. This, what it came, this came out a long time before X and Y did. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was his whole goal. He, like, all the sacrifices that he made, all the people he stepped over. Like, I'm actually really interested in what I. I'm very interested now for when I get to the X and Y manga. Yeah, me too. I haven't, I haven't read past uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, so I'm really interested in getting into some of that later stuff. Yeah, hopefully by the time we get there, all of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire will be out. Well, all the uh, complete versions. That's another one I'm really looking forward to because, like, I don't know. I, we'll see how our feelings on it when we get to it, but I... Um, when I first started reading the Ruby Sapphire stuff, it didn't catch me the way that the other ones did. But by the end of it, it had really grown on me a lot. And I really liked Ruby and Sapphire as characters. So, yeah, cool. apparently red and um, red and green are in uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, too. Mm -hmm. So there'll be something to look forward to. Oh, but I love how um, what was it? The 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 foot, the feathers were in Yellow's hat. Yes, they were like, "Oh, we we need the hat. Give us the hat." And she like didn't want to take it off because Red was there. And then she she hands it over eventually, and Red just jaw just like drops. Like, wait a minute, what's going on here? <laughs> it's amazing how one ponytail changes her look so much. Yeah, right. It, it's crazy how that happens. Like Hair. she looks, she looks like a very androgynous boy um, when she has the hat on. But the second the ponytail's out, you're like, she just look. It's like, oh, it's a girl. Yeah, it's weird with like anime and manga because they can only do so much with facial features with that with that manga art style, no matter who's drawing yeah. it. So the hair is really what makes the difference with every character. The hair and the clothes, that's how you can tell who's who. I will say one thing I really like about Yamamoto's art is he draws faces really well. Mm -hmm. Like all yeah. of Crystal's Crystal's faces are great. Like all her like perplexed faces, her whenever like Gold does something just so perplexing and she doesn't know how to react it's always just that like huh <laughs> like look yeah and uh the like all of gold's facial expressions are like very clearly like you could like you know put your hand over the face and you could see just by like the eyes like yeah that's gold one of my favorites is like when a uh, gold refers to crystal as miss pris yeah <laughs> and she, she's like what <laughs> yeah the goody two shoes but i love how it ends how like um like everyone's having that moment where like Misty and Yellow clearly both have a thing for red and like everyone's kind of looking at him like sidewise, like what's he gonna do? What's going on here? And then it like dawns on gold what's happening. So he like pretends to be on the phone with his mom and walks right in the middle of all of it. He's just like, Oh yeah, Red said he's gonna train me and shit. We're gonna go right now. See you guys. <laughs> like so Which is hilarious kinda... too, because it's like I'm trying to think like what is what is Red's like what is Red's girl count at this point? He's got yellow, he's got Misty, he's got Erica, he's got Sabrina, he's got green. Mm -hmm. Sure, there's more. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying to remember if there's any. Well, pretty I know that huh? pretty much every girl he runs into falls in love with him in this series. Yeah, well, that's about that. Well, at this point, he'd be. This is like three years after the initial arc, so he'd be like 14, 15 at this point. Yes. Something well, according like to the according to the the wic the wiki for the manga, um, it calculates their ages, and apparently his age where the manga is now, 
he's like 20 something now so makes sense because I, I i think it did say that yellow was 12 in this arc in in the manga itself uh because they made a huge deal about like every time like uh any of the current trio of this arc would interact with yellow and they'd be like oh you should stay out of this little little kid or whatever and they'd look at like the whatever id or whatever and be like holy shit you're older than me <laughs> like yeah oh shit you beat lance <laughs> what the fuck yeah <laughs> Yeah, I liked I like the characters. Uh, if I was gonna give a total rating to this the the gold silver crystal arc, I'd probably rate it overall like a seven. Um, for context, I gave the uh, red, red, blue, and yellow. I gave a, uh, I think I gave it like an eight. So mm-hmm. I I didn't enjoy this one as much as the first, not because of it being bad. I think it was just not as easy to follow. That's fair. Uh, I personally would give it probably an eight, um, because I like I like the way it, it expands from the first one, uh, continued to uh, develop the characters that we already had, and then also had the new characters. Uh, it definitely had more of a handle on what it wanted to do with the story from the start. Uh, you could definitely tell that from the beginning. Yeah, there was definitely a greater scope going on. Um, I just feel like they kind of like they put so much into that greater scope that they kind of it left the whole overall experience a bit disjointed. Mm-hmm. Like especially the final story, like the uh, final battle story, because that was all over the place. Yeah, uh, and... I, I think I think you'll like the next one um, because I mean, obviously with like Team Magma, and Team Aqua, this. There's going to be a lot of like that kind of stuff happening throughout, but for the most part, it's pretty much, um, at least for the first couple of volumes, it pretty much focuses on like the adventure aspect of it. Yeah, it's also my favorite game in the series, so I, I'll have a bit more nostalgia. I, think I will you'll have say a lot of fun with those two characters in particular as well. I will say it was really weird uh, when I looked at. I kind of looked at the first couple pages just to see. It was very weird seeing ruby and sapphire in their original ruby and sapphire designs like their initial appearances with like brandon and may Mm -hmm. because i'm like wow i haven't seen those looks in a while because i'm so used to the emerald design redesigns yeah because like ruby slash like brandon in the games his original design i still think is like one of the most like bizarre protagonist designs yeah, because everyone thought he had white hair for the longest time. Like I thought he had white hair for like ten years. Yeah, and like oh no, that's a hat. What? That's a really that's a hat. Stupid looking hat. <laughs> like the first time somebody like pointed that out to me, and I actually like, looked at the art, and I saw like his hairline underneath the hat. I'm like, holy shit, what the hell? I massively prefer the emerald, his emerald design, like with the uh, the short sleeve look and the uh, the green edition May, maze as well maze is just better well they they do um I, I do seem to remember that they do change their outfits part way through yeah you can tell because you look through the uh the art like the some of the, the art shots it, it definitely changes mm-hmm. but i mean i'm looking forward to reading that next yeah it's it's definitely a, a good time uh i like what they did with that one a lot i still find it interesting that they kept the numbering the same for going from like gold silver to ruby and sapphire well it's because that all kind of culminates in the following box I, I don't remember if like i know that we're gonna have some crossover characters like obviously the pokemon fan club guy he shows up in all of them um yeah. i believe um bill will probably show up at some point because he you know it just has to be there yeah um I think there's a couple other random people that show. I don't think any of the main people show up except for maybe yellow because it feels like yellow is just a, um, uh, I like, I like, I'm trying to think of the right word for it. Side character. Yes. But like at a, an enhancement kind of character is like there to kind of push the current mains forward. She's the comics. She's the manga's like original character, basically yeah um but aside from that i think it's pretty much just going to focus on uh the, the new characters yeah 
but then uh, when we get to fire red, leaf green, emerald, that's when they all congregate. Yeah, which I'm looking forward to that in particular, just because that really doesn't happen much in the games any longer. Like they really kind of moved away from all the games connecting. Mm-hmm. Like there's a references here and there, but like the only two games that were really truly connected were Red Red uh, Gen One and Gen Two, essentially. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, I don't know about you, but I was really annoyed um, in Gen. Well, I, wait, wasn't Gen Three your first game? Yes. Oh, well, then you wouldn't have had that annoyance. But I personally was really annoyed when I found out that I couldn't transfer my Pokemon from Gen One to Gen Two into Gen Three. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that was just a really unfortunate part of hardware limitations yeah well i get it but it still bothered me i was like god damn like they went the whole thing of being able to like oh yeah you can pull your gen one pokemon into gen two and then i'm like oh great i got all these pokemon trained up and ready to go for when the next game comes out and just, nope yep nope <laughs> start from scratch yeah no gen one or gen two start as few unless you want to play pokemon coliseum <laughs> yeah well <laughs> and who That's wants to do that <laughs> I did do it, but it's that is a fucking. Ugh, it's not a good game. Not a good game. Yeah. I like the idea behind it, but you know, if there's no wild Pokemon, then you kind of if there's no wild Pokemon, you can't re-challenge trainers, so you're kind of just trapping yourself at that point. Yeah, then it's all double battles and it's slow. Yep. But yeah, I think that's about it. Any other like major things you wanted to bring up? Um. I mean, other than just, like, stupid little things that happened throughout, not particularly. Um, yeah, there was a lot of... There wasn't nearly as much, like, massively goofy moments in this arc compared to, like, the original arc. I mean, they still happen, but it's it's definitely not nearly as consistent. But I think that's also just an extension of the tone difference. Hmm. But I, I think the goofiness was, like, attached to the characters more, because, like, Gold in particular is just goofy the entire way through. Yeah, that's just part of his personality. He just he's a rabble rouser, you know. That's just kind of who he is. The pool cue thing still confuses the hell out of me, but yeah, I like Crystal's whole kicking thing better personally. But well, she she was just more interesting. I mean, it's, I think it's fair. She was also like she didn't have as much baggage as like Gold and Silver did because her real only appearance was in one game, and even then, it was like optional. Hmm. But yeah, other than that, though, not a whole lot else to add. Um, we'll be getting to Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald next. Probably not right away. We'll probably do a yeah. couple episodes in between. Give it a little breathing room. Give it. Give me time to actually read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we got some other ideas for other things we want to do. Um, so we'll, we'll probably give it a little breathing room, and then we'll jump into it as fresh minds. Yeah. And hopefully a better perspective this time around, because I'm looking forward to covering probably my favorite games. So, yeah, because it, and it'll be fun. It'll be good too, because like um, we won't really have the the weird like awkward transition from the first set to the second set, because it'll be the same artist that we're already used to at this point. Yes, um, it, it won't be continuing off of the previous storyline the way that this one did. So it really will be a lot more starting from scratch, which I think will work to its favor. I was about to break out into the Pokemon Johto song. (laughs) It's a whole new world. (laughs) Is it Uh, bad that I can remember all of those themes like vividly? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, Dude, it freaking when Pokemon Go came out, I was walking around with like a little speaker attached to my hip playing Pokemon, I'd be playing like the Poker Rap and the Pokemon theme songs and I would poke Pikachu's jukebox. Remember that? I still I still to this day have like adv- the advanced battle theme in my head. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm I, I know someone I watched Pokemon Advance, just not as much. It's someone that's like, oh, oh, oh I'm unbeatable. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Advanced battle. <laughs> Yeah, that was. I think that was around the time where I started to fall off, and then once uh, I watched a little bit of the Diamond Pearl stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm done." <laughs> see, I love the, the. See, to me, like the Pokemon like themes were hilarious to me because like all the uh, 
the ones that came out in the 90s were like super 80s and then all the ones that came out in like the 2000s were like super 90s yeah i need to like try to find like do we know what the theme songs were like in japan they They were like you can find them on youtube i believe if you look hard enough yeah it's just a that's something i'm curious about because i remember the first time i heard the the theme song, the like actual Japanese theme song to Yu-Gi-Oh! I was like, holy shit. <laughs> like it's not really nearly good? as it's not nearly as bass heavy. <laughs> yeah, right. For real. Oh man. But yeah, so other than that, we got now a good hour and twenty out of this one. Yeah, not bad. Not we bad did at it. all. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. I, I I'm only somewhat falling apart <laughs> over here. Yeah, that's all right. We all have our yeah. moments. Yeah. Just, this was a rough week mm-hmm. but anyways guys uh, once again thanks for joining us on geek addicts uh, you can find geek addicts in the gnc podcast feed on all the major podcasting platforms particularly apple and spotify uh, the podcast is available on youtube in both audio and video form and you can also uh find all of our links at linktree slash the barber who games or you can come join the gnc podcast discord server where we um you can get all the info on gaming and collecting, the 3D experience, geek addicts, talk gaming, anime, all um, any sort of pop culture stuff. Uh, there's a weird cover at the Frog obsession, and Alex runs water bottle propaganda. Uh-huh. It's a fun, fun little group there. But, anyways, guys, once again, thank you for joining us. And we will see you all later. See ya.